Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. So lovely to chat to you both. How are you doing? Great. Happy to be here. Great. Love your accent. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so maybe you could just kick off with a brief introduction to this film. You know, for people who don't know anything about it, how would you give just a brief introduction to what it's all about? What can they expect if they're going to watch it? Okay. Uh, Agnes is the story of rumors of a demonic possession at a uh, convent and a older disillusioned priest and a priest in training going to investigate. And when they get there, uh, they've bitten off a bit more than they can chew and the resulting mayhem. And it's not your sort of, I, I feel like it, it's not your classic kind of horror. There's sort of lots of different types of genres that I think it, it sort of flits between. Um, so maybe you can both just, you know, from your different perspectives, talk a bit about, you know, why you're attracted to making this particular film and, and why this particular story. Agnes is a, um, it's really a character drama uh, hidden within a horror comedy. <laughs> Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I, as, a, you know, writing it and directing it, like, I think I just kind of get bored with, uh, with, you know, staying with one tone, you know what I mean? So, uh, so being able to switch back and forth is always, you know, a necessity to, 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 to hold my interest, which I think also translate to the audience. Like, you know, I, I feel like I, even watching movies, like I get tired of like, oh, this is a horror movie, we know we're gonna get out of this, you know what I mean? Or, or this is a drama, we know we're gonna get out of this. Like, I like, I like surprises. Yeah, it, it's a roller coaster ride. Like that's what we uh, at Quagmire really liked about the script and Mickey's filmmaking in general. After we saw Climate of the Hunter, we were like, wow, we wanna work with this guy who, it, it's really a journey. Like you can never, even in a horror movie, like there's a safety and once you settle in, because like Mickey said, you know what you're watching nothing is scarier than the unexpected and mm. Agnes is the unexpected. Mm. Definitely and um, I was wondering as well if you know because the horror genre is quite specific so I was wondering if you know there were other filmmakers or films that you take reference from when you're making this one um, but then perhaps it's other films outside of the horror genre as well that have influenced it you know would there be any that you might pinpoint? Mm. Sure um yeah uh did you ever see the crying game no no what about uh dead presidents you ever see that one <laughs> Sorry. Right. well these are uh these movies like in the 90s they, they were really onto something and they figured out a way to like kind of like put two movies into one mm -hmm. uh you know where uh where, where they just kind of follow one one central character that kind of goes through these through these different uh literally different movies like you know two different movies in one kind of deal but we're like following following the same person and uh that was kind of the goal with this one was just to like let's let's have uh, one character who's not not, not as essentially not the lead of it but then let's like you know follow that character you know what i mean like uh i'm sure you've seen a movie before where you're like i didn't get enough of that character i would have liked to see what that character went and did you know what i mean so it's like that kind of experiment i guess yeah, um, we also, we watched a film called Black Narcissus from the 50s, which is about uh, a, a, a convent in like a very remote place and how the isolation really starts to mess with the women there. So uh, as an actor, I definitely uh, took a lot of inspiration from that. Uh, there's also a really great film called uh, Vagabond that Agnes Varda did about a young woman who it chooses to be homeless and her kind of wanderings in the world. Um, and as an actor and producer, I really like uh, journey films. I like a character who interacts with a great ensemble cast. And, and like Mickey said, like wanting to follow each individual story. And in a way we kind of leave them all too soon. It's like, well, wait, like we have this great scene with uh, Mary and Agnes in the bedroom, but, but, but then she's gone. She, she's leaving her best friend. Like what happens there? I, I really felt that way every day, especially getting to work with our amazing actors like Haley McFarland and Rachel True and uh, Chris Sullivan, you know, all of them. It, um, they were all gone too soon, you know? 
And what about it being part of kind of the very specific kind of, you know, possession um, or like exorcism, you know, trail of films? Did you feel like people obviously when they read that in the synopsis will already bring to mind, I mean, most obvious being The Exorcist, but there's lots of other films within um, that realm. So was that something else that you had in mind that people might be thinking of that and whether you like draw on some of those tropes, but then also rail against them perhaps? I, I think of course, you know, and, and I think possession is, is, is really fascinating. Obviously, I think people are fascinated by the idea of being taken over and not having control of, of your body. Uh, and I know like there are movies for me, like the possession and the possession of Emily Rose uh, that really kind of twist the genre. Uh, and I feel like mm -hmm. Agnes does that too, that instead of like, yes, this may be demonic possession, but this also might just be how grief manifests, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so that's, I, I definitely hope people feel that way and, and get a different take on, on possession. Mm -hmm. I hope people feel tricked. <laughs> that's they, all. They, they think they're getting one thing and they get something else. <laughs> um, I was also thinking of the, you know, fantastic way um, it, it's filmed and the use of light, like the look and feel of it. Um, and it feels quite kind of um, specific, like very um, exacting in its style. So what was um, the idea behind that, the way it was filmed and how did you want it to look? Well, that's actually uh, the movie she mentioned earlier, Michael Powell's Black Narcissist was, uh, they had all these kind of elaborate, like very fake sets because it's the fifties and you know, that's how, the, that's how they did it. And, uh, and of course, you know, I, wanted that but uh, you know I knew that there was no way with our with what we were working with that that was that we were going to be able to do that but that you know doesn't change the, the framing you know the very classical framing where essentially you're trying to make everything look like a renaissance painting um, mm -hmm. so, and yeah. so, Sunrise Tipikani our lighting designer uh, is just I mean he's amazing like what he did and that he's worked with Mickey on all of his previous films like just you you let him like do his magic uh in the same with Caitlin Shelby who was our production designer like the depth that she gave to every set um was really incredible like I completely believe that the reason our film is in Tribeca and doing so well is because of the incredible crew that uh Mickey has surrounded himself with absolutely and I was also going to ask you know, about the process of filming it because it does shift from these moments of quite kind of dark humor, quite irreverent, but then to some quite, you know, more sort of scary and quite intense scenes. So what were maybe some of the highlights, the more fun bits, but also the, the challenging moments of filming? The challenging moments of filming. What do you got, Molly? <laughs> you don't want to go first? I don't. I, I, it's hard for me to answer these questions because like uh, I always see like a, a challenge in a in a movie and uh, or, or anything that was like kind of like um hard on the day or you know it, it, and and i just and it's, it's you know kind of my job to figure out how to how to work around it you know what i mean mm -hmm. so it's hard to remember anything that's like oh we were supposed to do this that day but we did this you know what i mean especially yeah. when sitting with the movie this long and watching it all it's just kind of like everything had its place and everything worked out the way it was supposed to you know what i mean so mm -hmm. uh if anything, I think this one was, for me, was not much of a challenge because I had so many awesome people um, to work with, you know, with the, the actors and the crew and everything, everybody, everything was like, my job was done. You know what I mean? Everything was very, very easy for me where I just got to go and be a traffic cop and say like, all right, let's do this and this. And, and it all got done. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, so of course there's always challenges in, in, in every movie, you know what I mean? But I'll be damned if I can't remember any of them. <laughs> well, he, here, here's a fun example, because like, it, it's also interesting, like using the word of like a challenge, because like, when you're making independent movies, like, yes, there is a challenge. But when you're the type of mind that wants to make independent movies, you enjoy solving problems and challenges. And you know, you're working with limited money and, and limited time. Uh, so for instance, uh, the Paul Sachimo character played by Sean Gunn, when Mary and Paul go on their date, and they end up back at his apartment, that was supposed to be uh, two scenes in the apartment. Well, we went from the living room 
So they start getting hot and heavy in the bedroom. But we were just running out of time. Like we were just running out of time and we had to get creative. And I pulled Mickey and Sean and Samuel Calvin, our DP aside. And I was like, okay, we're going to combine these two scenes. It's very doable. And we're just going to have him lean me back onto the couch and, and do all the business in here. Uh, and it saved us time. And also like, like Mickey said, there's a magic to, to going off, stri- off script when you have to, because it just worked so much better. It felt more natural. And that's kind of the magic that, that you can't create. Like it's going with the soul of the movie, mm-hmm. as silly as that sounds. And, you know, obviously there are moments that, you know, kind of make, make us laugh. There are bits that are scary. Um, but then there are also like other issues that are hit upon, I think, in the film, like especially like seeing kind of both the strength and the vulnerability um, of, your, of your character, for example. Um, and then also thinking of like, I don't know, like even like poverty, like the way she's struggling kind of in this Absolutely. outside world. So, you know, what do you think some of the things people are going to take away from the film? Oh, wow. Well, that's a, it's a big question. Um, and, and I do think, um, I think there's, you know, horror in daily life. Like, I think it is difficult to get by, especially when you are, um, you know, when you're not healthy, you know, when you don't have time to take care of yourself or you're ignoring things that you need to take care of and how that really um, infects and impacts uh, your, your daily life. Um, And so I do hope that people, when they watch the movie, if they connect to Mary, I hope they connect to maybe a little bit of squirming, that maybe there's something that is unresolved for them that they need to deal with. Uh, Maybe a a friend they haven't talked to in a few years. You know, I want people to be reminded of the things that that we don't deal with. It's it's like Mary says at the end of the film when she confronts uh, Father Benjamin and she says, but no one can actually say goodbye right Mm -hmm. like she's really trying to make a point of like there's 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 no such thing as letting go and it's unfair of you to ask me to do that Mm -hmm. yeah i'm sorry i I think the uh thing too is that you know every every single person watching it is going to um see something different out of it you know um and whether that's uh you know thematically or whether that's uh you know like a some like actually the structure of it and then being very um kind of disjointed by that i uh watched it with a friend who literally sat there in confusion just like wait a minute like we went and followed this character doing this but this part you know because they're 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 so used to like a a a standard movie structure and what are what would be considered to be satisfying you know, to an audience, you know what I mean? And this kind of just uh, does the opposite of that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, yeah, I think everyone's going to get something different out of it. I think some people will appreciate that. And I think some people will just be, you know, bewildered by it. And then, you know, some people, you know, won't like we'll it. They'll be up. angry. Yeah. They'll be angry at it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, and then just quickly find, because I've gone over my time, but, um, you know, how does it feel to have it as part of Trevica Film Festival? And, you know, how exciting that people might eventually be, all be seeing the film back in movie theaters rather than you know on their laptop or, or from their sofa at home. <laughs> uh, it was all a dream, you know? It just feels um, like this isn't supposed to happen. I'm not supposed to be this happy. How in the world did we get so lucky? So it's, it's very validating and I'm so happy for our cast and crew. Uh, it's just, I'm overwhelmingly grateful. Yeah, All right. yeah, yeah, same. It's uh, you know, it's it's almost surreal. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, it's been so lovely to chat to you both. Thanks so much for sharing all that with us. Um, and yeah, best of luck with the film, uh, the festival, and and after. So, thanks so much. This was really yeah. fun. Thanks so much. Cheers. Bye.